Hello lovelies. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Live with Carla Nicole. So I hope everyone enjoyed their weekend. I hope everybody had a fabli fabulous um, time. For me, I was quite busy. Um, I was all over the place this weekend. So, um, and this of course is another part of the work. So I'm still working as you can see. Um, so again, you know, um, being busy and doing what we're doing is a part of the mission, right? So I'm always doing the most and this weekend has been no different. So, uh, again, we're always busy doing things and I think it's important that we, um, focus on self and being alone and, uh, being alone doesn't always mean that you have to be lonely. Or that you um, cannot have a fulfilling life. So, of course, you know, uh, as a part of this mission, um, I'm always focused on making sure that people are well aware that you can enjoy life and be fulfilled without feeling lonely. Ugh, so let me get up here. I'm glad you guys are here. Hey, Perry, Marcus, Christopher, good to see you guys here this afternoon. Hope everybody had, like I said, a wonderful wonderful um weekend um for me i can just give you guys a little heads up um i actually did a um a interview a um interview with um a very good friend of mine she has a radio show called let's talk about health and she reached out to me and asked that i um pretty much you know, come on and talk about my desire for encouraging teenagers to not get involved with, um, you know, domestic physical violence when they're in an intentional relationship. So I had that going on and I'm going to, you'll see some of the clips. <clears throat> I haven't done all my editing yet for that. Um, so it's a, a show called let's talk about health, a radio show. So I had that on Saturday and then, um, that afternoon, I ended up doing a photo shoot. Um, my beautiful daughter did all this, you know, we went shopping and, you know, she dolled me up and then she did my makeup and then, <laughs> and then I had a photo shoot yesterday in the rain. Okay. So it was raining out there, but Hey, I pulled it off anyway. I said, Hey, I'm not scared of the rain, you know, um, let's go ahead and enjoy it. So I did that and now I'm here with you guys. So again, it's always a pleasure to um, not take lightly that you guys are here on a Sunday with me. Um, and uh, you guys know the rules uh, to be a part of my show. I am very, very big about us taking notes. And I cannot instill that you or insist that you guys take notes and I don't. So I have my book here, my journal. Okay, so I'm going to take books, okay? <laughs> I'm taking books, um, taking notes, I'm sorry, and make sure you guys have your notes and you have your pen and you have your paper and you're ready to roll because we are going to get down and into this comments and, and, and into this topic uh, head first, all right? Hey, Doug, so good to see you. <laughs> I appreciate that, love. Thanks, Asami, for your beautiful comments. Um... I appreciate that, Abraham, that I give positive messages. Well, you know, I, I that's my spiritual mission. I mean, um, you know, at this point, I'm very big about um, encouraging everybody to follow their purpose. And I can't do that if I'm not following the same. So, you know, again, it's all about encouraging you guys to do the same. So let's get started. Let's talk about this for a second. So today's topic is called self-exploration, okay? And, um, so we're, this is also still a part of the alone series. So you want to jot down, um, alone series because we are still on the alone series. And I think it's very important that I do these in series so that, you know, um, when we go back and we try to go through notes and try to find different stuff that we need to, you know, um, re reflect back on or, or go back to. Um, we have the series to, to focus on. Hey, Miss T, so glad you're here. I appreciate you, love. That's a sis that, that's always supportive, and, and she's never going to notice. Beautiful poet, and she's got her own stuff. Make sure you put 
your information about your show, sis, on, on here so people can see that. Um, so, um, the Alone series is definitely a part of, um, trying to instill in people that being alone doesn't mean you have to be lonely. And, um, actually it's the best part, um, of being, um, on the planet. We need to make sure that while we are alone, we are instilling in ourselves the importance of finding ourselves, um, encouraging ourselves, enhancing ourselves. All these things are important so we can move forward in life. Because whether we're with someone in a relationship, parenting, you know, or a, a child of an elder, whatever we're, whatever role we're playing or that is a primary role that we're in, we have to be comfortable with being alone. But if we're not following that, then the, the, the indecisions we make is based upon feeling like we're grim, we're sad, we're, we're, we're not enough. And that's not true. We're actually substantial alone. But, it, you know, having someone else in our life is a beautiful thing. And, you know, I encourage that. But first, I want us to pretty much focus on how do we do well with self first. So on this topic, I want you guys to write down about self-exploration. Now, before I go into exploring self, I think it's vitally important that if you have not watched it yet, go back to my old um, show called Self Inventory, because we have a lot of inner works to do before we can start exploring self. So please go back to my old, um, my old live that was called Self Ex uh, Inventory, and that show was about um, really doing the work for you, finding where you're falling a little short, finding your flaws that you can really work on. Um, because it's important that you work on you first in order to really focus on exploring yourself. Working on self means we have to figure out how do we, um, kind of smooth out the edges or, or fix, fix some of our, our flaws or, or character flaws or whatever. We need to focus on how we can improve ourselves. So go back to my show um, about self inventory because it's vitally important that we focus on our inner works first. That is vitally important. Okay. So I wanted to talk about that real quick. So if you don't have that information, I will click here and give you guys the link on the last show about self inventory because I think it's very important that we work on that as well. But before that, I want to start talking about sex self exploration. Now I'm going to throw something out there. You know, um, my mom <laughs> and God bless her soul. She had put me in all kinds of stuff. Okay. When I was young that I was not really all about at the time. She put me in gymnastics. I had flute lessons. She had me in t-ball. I mean, she had me in all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, I don't even know why this woman is so insistent upon me doing different things that I just don't take interest in. At the time, I didn't think so. So she was insistent upon me trying different things, whether I liked it or not. Now, in that process, my mom... This is a little funny story. She insisted upon me being a part of this T-ball team, right? So I'm like, I don't even want to be on T-ball. Well, not only was it a T-ball team, but it was a boy T-ball team. So she insisted upon me being a part of a T-ball team that was all boys. And she would not lay off. She called the coach almost daily. She would not stop insisting upon him putting me on this team because there's no reason why she can't be on the team and she's a girl but that doesn't mean she can't play ball with them and but she went on and on finally the coach was like mrs willis listen okay we'll put your daughter on the team so i ended up going on to your ball and everything i ended up catching the winning ball it's a real long story but to say the least it was something i was not interested in at all like why are you putting me in this mom i don't want to go into this it was one of the best experiences that she ever gave me because, you know, um, we have to start to really focus on some things that we don't necessarily think we're going to like. So what I want you guys to write down right now. Okay, so I wrote down a loan series and self-exploration. Now, what I want us to write down is basically um, 
find something that you would never have thought would be something you would do and then do it. Why? Because number one, self-exploration means you are exploring something in yourself that you did not know you even had an interest in. For instance, a lot of times as we grow up and get older, we see different things that go on. We'll just, for instance, like for me, polo. Nothing about polo has ever moved me. I never thought polo was fun or nothing like that. So I thought, well, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's something people are into, but it's just not my thing. Well, how do I know? I never tried it. So how do I know if it's, if it's a thing for me or not? So I cannot, what I want us to break is the prejudices against different, different opportunities we could be out here doing. Now, the problem is a lot of times when we are single people, we get in a routine, okay? So we get in a routine, we, we have a humdrum in our life. I don't want to do anything. I just want to go to work and go home, go to the grocery store and go home. I don't really want to try nothing new because that's really not what I'm trying to do. Listen, we have to break out of that. And just like Doug said, you got to break out of your zone. Yes, break out of your comfort zone. Why? Because a lot of times we might find something that we are dead interested in and we didn't even know it. For instance, like my, my winner last week, because I had a trivia last week. If y'all missed, I had a trivia last week. And I said, anyone that can tell me what the topic was about last week got one of these journals. Okay. And the winner for that was Amanda Flowers. Well, what's so funny about Amanda is she actually is doing um, the uh, dog competitions with her dog. And she was like, Carla, I never knew how you know, how easy it is to get into this, you know, uh, competitions. Like, it's really easy. I was like, really? She's like, man. And when she talks about dog competitions, she lights up. I'm like, one thing about you is, you know, ever since you got into this, you love it. And it shines, it resounds in your spirit. I can see it all over you. You light up when you talk about dog competitions. So something about this is something you love. So she's like, well, I've always loved dogs. I said, okay. But why I wanted to bring that up is when you sit down and you really look at it, it's like, what is it that really moves in you? What is it that you really desire to do? For me, I didn't know it until I think about, well, I've written poetry probably for about, I don't know, for years, but I didn't really get serious about really focusing and time, chiming into my poetry until about 35. Okay, so once I kind of tapped into that, I was like, ooh, this is really good for me. I'm really loving it. And I started creating and creating and creating. And what I found when I was creating stuff, like, ooh, I can't stop. Like, now I have this undying desire to continue to write. Then I not only was writing poetry, I was now writing blogs and, you know, and now I'm doing this. So, you know, there's spinoffs to when you tap into what you love that now can take you and branches of different opportunities. You just don't know. Hey, Duana. Um, I appreciate that love. I appreciate that. Um, so you have all these other branches of opportunities you just don't know about. Just like I said, I, I started going into my poetry but when I went into my poetry, it was one thing. But then after I started writing, and then I wrote um, a, a story, per se, like a little story, about um, a gentleman um, and his wife having issues with his muddy shoes coming in the house every day. And it caused an array of issues. And then I ended up creating a play called Irreconcilable Emphasis. So again, when I'm talking about tapping into your creativity, you actually tap in and to that creativity. And then it, it just causes branches and branches and branches of opportunities that you cannot imagine. So what I want us that are alone to do is to break out of our comfort zone. So that's number one, break out, write this down, break out of comfort zone. Okay. Now, um, there are so many different things you can be doing. Um, for instance, if you're unsure of the different opportunities out here that you can try, there's like, oh my God, so many different things. There's pottery, there's, there's swimming, there's, 
uh, yoga. There's so many different opportunities you can be inter in getting involved in. Um, and in this opportunity that I'm telling you about, you are also getting ready to open up yourself into a whole new world of different people. Now you are opening yourself up to different souls that you can now interact with. Because a lot of times I think being alone causes us to actually get into an isolation. And um, in the isolation, it kind of causes a, a easy way or a highway straight to depression. Because we're not having that interaction with someone else. We're not having, um, you know, the social, the social dynamic to our life that we need. So why I'm encouraging you to do something new is because you don't know who you may meet. You don't know what people or souls you can get, you know, get to know that can actually change your life. So this is why I'm telling you this is important that you do the exploration. So first of all, break out of your comfort zone. So if you're doing something routine every day, like just like I said, you go to work, you go home. You go to the grocery, you go home change it change it for instance if you want to do something that for you say for instance hey i think i want to go and have me a drink well i don't want to go alone but i don't really have a lot of friends take yourself to bw3s or take yourself to you know red lobster sit at the bar and just mingle with the bartender whatever you don't have to drink alcohol. You can drink a, a water with lemon. But get yourself out of your routine. Because what's happening is when we get in a routine, we begin to get grim. We begin to lose our thirst and hunger for life. And that's not what you want to do. You want to be able to still have a social life. Just because you're not in a relationship with someone doesn't mean you can't have a social life. Doesn't mean you can't be thirsty for life. Doesn't mean you can't enjoy life. You can. It is so easy to enjoy life just in doing something different. For instance, I have an uncle that has, and I talk about him often because he is one of the most jovial people I know. But he has a immense desire and hunger for life. He has massages twice a week he does yoga he does tai chi he goes to thai and get uh goes to different thai restaurants and eats on his own he does swimming every day he has a dancing thing he does he takes himself to art school there is no time to say i'm lonely whether he and he and he has friends he's got friendships that he entertains and has a social life so why i'm saying this is Maybe that seems a little expensive. Okay, I get that. So you don't want to spend a lot of money on this stuff. Okay, well, like I said, you can do things to where you can do things to where it's not expensive. Take yourself, if you, if you don't have something that is really keeping you encouraged, then what I would strongly suggest is getting yourself involved with something that you just cannot imagine is going on. Now, I know, for instance, in my hometown, there's a lot of um, different things that goes on in the community, like in the libraries and stuff. You can go over to the library and you can find different activities in the city that may be $25. Like I got something um, the other day that I can go to where there's going to be a comedian in my city. And, you know, we get drinks uh, for $25. You get drinks, you get a, 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 a social dinner. I don't know any of these people, but you know what? I will go. Why? Because... I am a socialite. I love people. I like to get to know people. I don't know who might know who. I mean, you know, I, I'm building my, my following here because I want to build my own network. I want to have my own TV show. I want to have my own radio show. But I'm not begging anybody to give it to me. I am working up the ladder to accumulate on my own. Not because I think somebody owes me nothing. So with that said, I want to go here and get social in a social environment to get to know people. Why? Because I can build my market with someone I probably would have never met had I not gone to this type of event. There's so many different types of events that's going on in different cities and different towns. You just have to be willing to start to seek out what is it that I can do that I can find myself enjoying. Have you ever considered skydiving? 
What about going into gymnastics or, or finding something, uh, you know, traveling? Have you ever considered taking a one tank trip to somewhere you've never been before? Try that. Like, oh man, you know, my weekends, I'm at home alone. I'm, you know, I'm sad. I'm lonely. I don't have anybody to hang with. Man, pack you a bag. Take yourself into your car. Get yourself ready for a one tank trip. One tank trips are fun because you don't know where you're going to end up and make it adventurous, make it fun. And you know, one of the things that I think we lose sight of is traveling for one tank. You don't know how far that is. That's pretty far for one tank. And then once you do that, you travel and you're like, man, this is awesome. I'm like loving this. I don't know where I'm going to end up and throw yourself into a, almost like a pool of unknown. A lot of times we just can't get comfortable or settle in. I don't know what's going to happen, but we need to. We need to start getting more um, involved with allowing the unknown to, to penetrate in our lives. Because when stuff is unknown, it's much more fun than everything being predictable. Try something new out for a change. So write that down. If you cannot afford a lot of stuff, try taking a one tank trip. I'm telling you, traveling is so awesome. When you drive and you travel somewhere or you get on a plane and you go somewhere for a while, there's a lot of um, different air flights that you can take that are pretty reasonable that isn't going to cost you an arm and a leg. Kind of go on cheapo air. Take a look at that and just kind of take yourself into, um, into a journey. That you just don't know what might happen or what, what you might see. I want you guys to explore self. Because when you explore yourself, it's so awesome. Let me tell you something. When I ended, Before I ended up going into this um, spiritual movement of assisting others and, and, and doing this live shows and doing my poetry and all that. I ended up going silent for about three days. I left my home. And I went to a hotel and I stayed there for three days. And because I was spiritually moved to, I got a message from God that told me, leave. I need you to leave from your children and, and I need you to go and get spiritually centered. And I thought, all right, I will. So I left. I was like in my city. So I wasn't even far. I was maybe about 20 minutes from where I live. And um, I stayed at a hotel and I just really took the time to explore myself. I learned about meditation, how to meditate. I channeled my, my spirituality. I asked God to show me some things that I would have never known had I not gone to this extent of leaving my home and putting my children in, in, in safe care, but not having to worry about them also helped me to do this. Um, and when I did that, one of the beautiful things, I'm telling you, one of the beautiful things about it, it showed me that you matter. Yes, we all matter. There's nobody on the planet that doesn't. Sometimes we have to pluck ourselves or, or God will pluck us and will make us go into a, a whole life of unknown. Like to this day, I don't know where God's taking me. All I know is... When I'm given a message, I just do the work, whatever that is. I got you, Juan. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely make sure you can catch this later. It's fine. Um, but you have to be able to get settled in the unknown. We don't always have to know everything, do we? I mean, why is it that we are so hell-bent on knowing everything? We don't have to know everything, do we? Come on. We, we can get to the point where we can just enjoy life. Um, one of the things that I can also tell you is, you know, look at your resources in your city. One of the greatest things you can do is you can, um, kind of throw yourself in a social dynamic. I know before I had decided to, um, or, or one of the things I was deciding to do is, you know, being a single woman, um, I was considering going into some type of dating, but I didn't really want to do like. A dating site per se and there was this like boat that you could go on and it was for singles and you can mingle there 
Um, it was like a membership. And so look into your, you know, look into that if, if, if that's something you're interested in. I mean, you know, um, we don't have to look like, oh, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want anybody. I don't want any of this. I don't want any of that. It's not true. We can, we can still have relationships, you know, um, but it doesn't always have to be the traditional relationships. We can just have friends. We can have um, significance that, that really um, are important in our lives. So that's something we need to consider as well. So like I said, appreciate you, Juan. Like I said, break out of your comfort zone. Okay. So now check, check your local listing. So like I said, go to, um, go to your library, check your classified section, um, check with different friends. Um, sometimes you can check the schools as well. I know the colleges have information that you can get information about different community based um, opportunities to where you can actually find yourself involved in something that maybe you didn't know. For instance, you know, um, sometimes we seem to think that things are hard to get involved in. Like Amanda said, well, I thought it was hard to get into dog competitions, but then once I got in it, I found it's not hard. So why I'm saying that is say, for instance, you want to be a mentor to young people. I mean, there is a lot of lost young people out here. There is a lot of lost young women out here. There's domestic violence going on. There's all kinds of things that really need help, you know. Um, and if you don't want to become a mentor or a coach or anything like that, what you can do is you can get involved with being just the um, liaison. You know, there's a lot of different um things you can do to become a liaison um, to where you are assisting in, in, in the resolution to whatever problems in the city. See, my thing is, my dad told me for like a whole year, he called me, continually called me and said, be selfless, be selfless. He called me every day and kept saying, be selfless. I said, I am pretty selfless, dad. I'm a pretty selfless person. And I am selfless until it just clicked one day. And I was like, oh, be selfless means to care less about everything about me and just my little nucleus or my center, my family, but care about others and not expect anything in return, but just care about other people. And so I began to learn that that's important. So why I'm saying that is, Find your um, charity. Um, and charity can sound like, oh, I'm just helping the poor. Not always. Charity could be you're helping someone in need. So you could be helping someone in need that you just end up getting a care for. I saw one post on Facebook where there was a cop that saw a young lady who was pregnant laying on the sidewalk because she had got kicked out of a homeless shelter. And he went and became active in her life. He ended up getting her a place to stay, ended up taking care of her and her daughter and the baby. And that's why I'm telling you, being a human being and being someone in this lifetime right here is vitally important that we help others and we encourage other people to help others because there's always some type of need one way or the other. There's a need here or there's a desire here. So whatever our need is, we need to, well, I guess I could say, whatever we can apply towards someone's need is essential to try to encourage other people to do the same. We can become the example by helping other people. Now, um, I'm not saying everybody should go live and do what I do, but I am saying that when we are alone or when we don't have anybody that we're obligated to, this is the perfect time to be charitable. This is the perfect time to go out and say, I can help someone else. I can help an array of people by being a, a, li a liaison to getting them some help. Or I can be um, an assistant to someone that is having some problems or anything like that. It's vitally important because, you know, I tell my kids all the time, when you receive um gifts or you receive something beautiful from someone 
that's a great feeling. But there's nothing on the planet like helping someone else and seeing the tears just coming down their face because you did something to help them. Totally different. It's a totally different gratification. And so I want to, you know, encourage you all to do the same. So when you're, like I said, when you are self-exploring, be sure to also encourage yourself to help someone else. Um, like I said, you don't have to go all out. Um, you don't have to overextend. But it is vital that you give to other people. We have to become selfless in this, in this lifetime. Because there is nothing more gratifying than helping someone else. I'm telling you, it is vitally important. So another thing, I appreciate that, Steve. I love you. Um, another thing now, after, after the charity, now because after we're self-exploring, the charity is one thing, but now here's another good thing that we, we should do now, uh, also. Is, you know, when we are exploring ourselves. And exploring our desires and needs. And say for instance. We get to the point where we try maybe three or four things. And it's just. It's not something we desire. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep exploring. The exploration should not stop. Because you didn't have a success story. Or something that you just jumped in. And it fell all great. Listen. Nothing that we get on this life in this lifetime. Period that we uh, are gratified for or happy for doesn't take work. <laughs> so understand this. Give your all. Put forth all your effort. Don't just say, okay, I tried it and I don't like it. No. Did you really give yourself full effort? Did you really put forth all the effort you could? Did you really go without prejudice? Because like I said earlier, prejudice is a bad thing. So write to, write down prejudice. Prejudice is a bad thing and why is it why is it a bad thing? Prejudice is a bad thing because we're prejudging how we are going to respond to something before we even try something. That's not that's not the way to do it. Go in completely and totally open to just seeing if you're going to like it or not. I actually have tried pottery and pottery is not my thing, but I did enjoy seeing my my uh, end result. So I think I made a bowl one time. Um, I think I made a, um, a arrow, I believe, an Indian arrow. And um, to see it after it's baked, it's pretty awesome to look at. You know, it's like, oh, I thought it's going to look like, you know, like a clay look. It doesn't. It's like once they bake it, they put like this this gloss over it and it just makes it beautiful. So you don't know what you might find interesting or intriguing or something you enjoy. I'm telling you, pottery is something that is pretty hot. And if you guys can remember the old movie, what was that movie with Demi Moore and um and um Dirty Dancing? Do you remember how he made the pottery just look so hot, like sexy and and it really was like, wow. I didn't do the, the, the wheel, the pottery wheel. I didn't do that, but you know, um, he really brought out how awesome you can do pottery. Well, again, it's, it's not necessarily, um, what the action that you're trying to get into is. It's your energy behind yourself doing it. So how you feel here before you go into it, it's, it's huge. So write down what energy you're putting into it and then write down about your attitude. So we're going to write these two down. Actions means your attitude and the energy. So your energy that you're bringing forth to any type of self-explored self um, uh, activity that you want to do Make sure you're coming in it with a good attitude, okay? So attitude is key. Why? Because if you go in with a negative attitude or I don't really want to do this, I'm just doing this because I was told to do it or I'm just doing it just to see, go in with a positive attitude. Go in with great energy. When you go into something with positive, ad positive attitude and great energy, you will find, ooh, even if it's not something you think you would stick into or continue to do, you can at least say, I did enjoy it while I was there. 
and it may be something I will try again maybe at another time. Maybe it's just not for me right now. It changes the game. But when we get all negative, like, I don't want to try this, but I'm going to try it anyway because I ain't got nothing else to do. That's, that's not the way to really having a positive self-exploration. Listen, you know I'm big about this stuff. Make sure you're writing down what I'm telling you. You got to break out your comfort zone. You got to check your local listings for different opportunities and different things you can be doing in the community um, that you may take interest in. Um, and, and really, you know, um, you can be a liaison. You can be in between something that, wow, I mean, I didn't know I could be encouraging young people or becoming a mentor or, or being a coach for a football team or anything you want to do. It's not that hard. There's all kinds of things you can do that doesn't require a whole bunch of, you know, red tape, if you will. Um, and then make sure that you keep in check your prejudice, your prejudice about the opportunity, the, 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 um, the opportunity and the action that you're going into. Don't get so prejudiced. Like, I don't really want to try this, but I'm going to try it anyway, because I guess I'll do it. Try it with a great hearted spirit. But when you do that, now here's the thing. When you do it with a great hearted spirit, you'll be surprised that even, like I said, even if you don't care for it, you'll actually have a great experience trying it. These are the different things you want to look into. Um, and then last but not least, your attitude and your energy. Sometimes we have to say, you know what? This is something I'm looking through my options of different things I can try. I'm just not ready yet. So let me, let me kind of go and do some inner work and, and figure out what's causing my negative attitude or what's causing my negative energy or how I can get a little more positive because that's really key. Positivity really helps you in the long run. My, my voice is getting dry. Positive energy can help you in the long run to, in, to basically have a better um, opportunity and, and, and definitely a better experience. See, I just don't want people to think because I'm alone, I can't, you know, or I'm miserable in my, in, in my aloneness. You don't have to be. You can actually enjoy being alone. Matter of fact, the enjoyment of being alone is going to help you to break out. Like, just like, um, was it you? Uh, let's see. Who was it? Was it, it was you, Doug. Just like Doug said, break out of your, you know, um, out of your zone, your comfort zone. So that's important. Now let's take a look at what um, Abraham said. He said, you are a natural, you are natural gifted with such a special and golden heart. And the messages you voice out are extraordinary weapons, which can help human beings to be, to have a better living condition and to be always proud of him or herself of being someone who wished to be positively. I'm learning a lot of positive lessons, which I hardly learned from anyone. May God continue to bless you and, can, and protect you well. More love and respect to you. I appreciate that, Abraham. Seriously, that I'm truly humbled about your compliments. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed. Let me tell you something. Um, there's nothing like helping so many um, and, and encouraging people to, to do what they need to do. You know, the hardest part about being alone isn't necessarily the alone part. I think it's the silence. Let's just think about that. Everybody that's alone, agree with me here. It's the silence, is it not? Like, it's quiet. I'm so used to noise. I'm so used to, you know, having some type of interaction with someone else. And now all of a sudden, it's just quiet. And I think that in our quiet time, it can be fearful. You can be, you can find yourself fearful of the quiet. You can feel, feel like you said, Doug, discomfort zone, right? You can get discomforted with being quiet. Like, I don't know how to, how to handle all this silence. Like, that's a lot. That's why I'm encouraging all of you that are single or, or, or alone to get out and do and get involved with different things and, and, and different activities. Not to get so busy that you're not able to enjoy your alone time. But I want you guys to get out here and explore some things. And please let me know what you're exploring. I'm interested in knowing what are y'all doing? 
I'm encouraging you guys, yes, but I want to see pictures. I want to hear your stories. I want to see what you guys are doing after we have these conversations. I'm not doing this just to be talking to myself. I'm writing this stuff down like I'm encouraging you to. But I'm also wanting to see pictures what you guys are doing. I want to see, oh, Carla, I went and jumped out of a plane. Or Carla, I ended up going and being... um doing the bars and gym, gymnastics. I'm I'm now doing weightlifting. I'm doing wrestling. I want to hear all the stories. I want to see. I want to see what is it you guys are doing because I I tell you um just being alone doesn't have to be miserable. We can have some fun with our aloneness because remember like I said in the beginning of the show, being alone means you're not obligated to someone else. Let me just reiterate that for a second you know for instance for instance and i'm just gonna say this real quick with women you know um when you got a man you have to go when you go shopping or whatever with a man men don't want to go shopping that is not something y'all like or enjoy unless you know you're we're shopping for something like you know tech stuff but if we're going shopping for clothes or shopping for makeup or shopping for stuff like that purses and stuff y'all guys don't want to go with us for that and so we're going to the store with our man and he's like, uh, and humming, uh, uh, how much longer? And uh, when, uh, okay. Yeah. I like that one. And he's just trying to rush you to make a decision. And you're like, man, I, you know, I'm just not getting, um, a gratified enjoyment exper experience here with you while I'm shopping for my shoes and my purses and my, and my clothes. So let me just go with my girlfriends instead. But you'll find though. When you're by yourself, you don't have that worry. You don't have to worry about someone hemming and hawing when you're going shopping. You're just going shopping. And, well, I have to say for me, I still have my son that will hem and haw. So I don't get that break yet. But just for instance, I don't, you know, you don't have a man sitting there like, oh, how much longer? Same with you guys. You know, y'all want to watch the game or you want to go out to the to the bars with your friends. You don't have to keep calling your woman and find out well, what time are you coming home? How much longer are you going to be? Are you going to watch one game or two? Or, you know, so all I'm saying is, is, is at this time that you have that, um, what I guess, uh, forgiveness. You have that grace right now that you don't have to be obligated to call nobody. You don't have to be obligated to say what you're going to do. You can just do it. So, this is the perfect time to go ahead and do that. So again, I want to reiterate to you guys, you want to um, break out of your comfort zone, number one. So if you didn't get to write this down, write this down now. Break out of your comfort zone, all right? This is for your self-exploration. Two, check your local listings for different places and activities that's going on in your surrounding area. Because you would be amazed at the different stuff you can find. And the number one place to look is the library they got all kinds of stuff they have different flyers and stuff that we usually it comes in the mail we throw it out stop talk to the librarians and they will tell you no here's some things right here that's going on in the city that's going on in our town and and you will find oh man i might want to try this or i might want to do that or do this that way you're getting some type of what social um, having, building like a social circle or getting to know new people. Three, become selfless. Okay. Selflessness is key. So in order to be selfless, you can now become a mentor to a young person. You can be, um, an aid to other people that are hurting. Um, I know that, you know, the Red Cross, they, people go through some type of trauma. You can give blankets and stuff. You can actually give to others, all kinds of stuff you can do to be selfless. So, Become a liaison um, by actually being the middleman for somebody going through something traumatic. That's something you can do as well. Four, charity. Charity doesn't always mean just giving your money and giving a check to something. Get out and learn some things that's going on in your community. There's all kinds of domestic violence stuff. There's all kinds of stuff you can be helping young people. There's all kinds of things you can do to encourage other people. So check out the charity. Check out churches. Churches always need help with something. Um, there's all kinds of food drives. All kinds of stuff you can be doing. You can feed the homeless. All kinds of stuff. There's just stuff that you can be doing while alone. Rather than sitting around, basking around, thinking that there's nothing you can do. You don't know how much your help or aid to someone else can be. And like I said, getting something is beautiful. Yes. 
but giving to someone else is priceless. All right. And then five, remove your prejudices from any type of engaged idea or activity that you're going into. Remove the prejudice. Please don't be prejudiced about, oh, I got to do this or, oh, I got to do that. If you have that negative attitude or negative energy, don't do it, okay? Until you can restore positive energy and a positive attitude, okay? So that's important. So remove the prejudice. And like I said, um, attitude and energy is key. That's number six. You know, um, doing something new is scary at first, right? Um, for instance, like yesterday I had a photo shoot and, um, I wasn't necessarily nervous per se, but, um, it kind of was perfect. It, it was a perfect example because, you know, um, it's like making love for the first time. You got this man standing there <laughs> with a camera and you've now got to come into your whole essence and you have to pull your soul to the forefront so he can pull it on the lens. And so there's a making love kind of thing going on with you and the photographer. That's something I've never done. I have never had a professional photo shoot. So I decided, yes, I'm going to do something today that's different. And so that was where I did my self-exploration yesterday. I decided to do a photo shoot. And, um, and I also had my daughter do my makeup. I mean, I went all out. Like I did the whole whole kitten caboodle like no i'm not gonna just go and do a photo shoot i'm gonna go get the clothes i'm gonna go get the the face the, the facial stuff that i need my daughter and i went shopping and i actually did a full-blown photo shoot why because to me i believe it's important that we throw ourselves into something that we've never done and in order to do that um it ex it, it causes you to get out and find that you know I matter, damn it, I matter. And I don't need somebody else to come in here and tell me I matter. I matter because I believe I matter. And that's something that's very important for us that are alone need to know. I matter. Say that to yourself today. I matter. And when you start to own that you matter, you it doesn't matter about what other people think or how other people feel about you or what other people's prejudices are against you all that stuff doesn't mean nothing i don't care how people feel as far as i'm concerned i'm on my mission to take care of other people that really care about what i'm giving so that doesn't matter to me haters will do what they have to do because that's why they're here haters have a job to do let them do it but as far as you you matter so being alone doesn't mean you got to be miserable so I hope this helps somebody today. And like I said, please send me your pictures. I want to see pictures. I want to see that I am helping you guys to do something different. I don't care what it is. Go do something fun. Do something you never thought you would do. Do something, like I said, take a one tank trip somewhere. Travel. Like I said, you can get, you can get cheap, cheap airline tickets. Go to Cheapo Air and see what kind of tickets you can get. You just don't know what you could do. It's amazing. You want to be a cook? Hey, take some cooking lessons. I mean, there's no reason why we cannot expand and explore who we are. Be sure to share this video because we don't know what can be <laughs> going on in other people's lives when they're sitting around miserable. If we can help them to break out of that, then why not do it, right? So share this video. Um, I bet I went over today. And I did. That's okay. I went over a little bit. It's all right. I don't care about that. Um, I just care about you guys. And I care about um, making a difference. And I care about um, telling you guys and encouraging you what I do to encourage you to do what you need to do or encourage you to do something different. Because like I said, at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> We can be, we can be doing negative things on the planet, but, um, I encourage everybody to do something that is going to make a difference. And so, like I said, please share this video, um, and please send me your pictures. I want to see pictures. Like I said, I want to see what you guys are doing that, um, that, you know, you, you got encouraged to do with this video because at the end of the day, you know, um, this is what I love to do. I love hanging out with you guys on a Sunday. You guys could be anywhere else, but you're right here with me. So I take that very, 
very seriously and um i i don't take it lightly that you guys are um being encouraged so i definitely want to continue to do this i'm not sure yet what next week's um live is going to be about you know i'm always up to something but um but i think i like this one how about you guys you like this one is this one kind of cool for you guys i hope it is um but like i said step out your comfort zone do something different um and and really like i said there's really no reason to feel um isolated because we don't have to be um there's so many opportunities to just get involved in so uh think about what i said all right so i'm out of here guys i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your sunday and um it's carla nicole <laughs> signing off best kept you guys have a good day bye